I mean, I've uh, seen things like anti-bullying policies saying you will do this and you won't do that. I don't really think that works because um, I've worked with a guy before who used to talk about white noise. So if, if you're talking to a kid and he doesn't, you know, you're, you're laying out a list of rules or you're talking too much, after about 10 seconds they just hear like that going on. And so the easiest way is to get them to talk to you and say what they think and then you can board what they think and, and then go on from there. But if you're just laying it down then they'll listen well, or they'll pretend to listen but it doesn't necessarily mean it's going in or that they're going to do it either. Can we run? Why can't we run? Uh -huh, hands up, why can't we run? Yes? Why is it dangerous, Ritzvi? Because it goes down. Yeah, we might fall down. Yeah, okay. And no pushing, please. No fighting. No kissing, no killing. Okay. I normally, actually, I've forgotten that one, but I normally will do things as well, like say, you know, don't take a pencil, because why not? And then they do the whole thing about, you know, you might stab someone in the eye, I get my shirt covered in blood and I've got phone 999 and then you know my boss gets angry because we've got to clean the carpet maybe your mother will be angry because she's got to clean and these kind of things as well so when we you know they know the rules and they'll start they, they start telling me but they the common rules you know the, there'll be things that they have in their own school and but because it's a little bit different here you just need to to remind them about them okay Kieran okay. Ritzvi what does Kieran need to do now the yeah but can you write them down Okay. Okay, you guys finished? Yeah. Okay, start. At the start, you have to be quite, or you have to be very consistent with how they're applied. Number two, play table tennis. <laughs> very easy. You can't do anything. Number three, judge for the spray. <laughs> Number five. <laughs> <laughs> Just for sleep. Uh, excuse me, the, the clock is it's covered. It's real Yeah, but you can see that. Oh, Just for the knee pains. And what's this one? Two left. This one. Real or not real? Real. Uh, uh, yeah. Hands up if you think he is real. Yeah. What do you think this robot can do? Dancing. Oh, oh, hands up please. Hands up. Daisy. Yeah. Yeah. And they can um, shoot lasers. Can they? Okay. Maybe some can. Okay. Yes. Oh, oh. Shh. Hands up please if you're going to speak. What movie is this one in? Star Wars. Star Wars. Star Wars. Hands up next time, please. Oh, yeah, so this one's in Star Wars. Hands up again if you know his name. Um, I try and be cons as consistent as I can. But sometimes, in some situations, you might get a bit... You know, if, uh, if the kids are, for example, communicating, if you're feeding back or something, and they're not, um, they're not putting up their hands, for example, but it's working without them... Uh, it's, it's working with them not putting up the hands. It's okay because everyone's getting, they all feel very comfortable and it's got a lot less formal. Then I think that's fine as long as you're consistent with it. So I couldn't just say, oh yeah, this table, oh yeah, that's fine. No, you put up your hand. If I say you've got to put up your hand, then everyone has to put up their hands. In the first class, we set up rules. What I tend to do is I give them uh, scenarios. Like there's a student who's not very confident and he tries to talk in class but nobody listens to him, uh, well nobody can hear him because other people are always talking at the same time. And then there was another one who was always talking when the teacher was talking. So one of the rules that uh, they come up with is, oh, always listen to the teacher. And I was like, well, what does that mean? And they're like, oh, well, don't, um, don't talk when the teacher's talking. And then I was like, well, what about this other one? You know, why, why, why shouldn't we listen when other people are talking as well? Um, so that's kind of established that, that we've written that down and they know that, um, that they, they shouldn't do it. So that one I always pick up because I, I always want them to speak. And I, I don't want just one child to speak. I want them all to be confident speaking. Um, so, so yeah, it, it, it's one of the things that we're quite big on is not just listen to me, but listen to each other. Because quite often, I mean, you saw with those robots, like one of them, I wasn't sure what it did. So they, they came, they have much better ideas about what it, it might do than me. So how, it has wheels and legs. <laughs> how tall is it? How tall? It can go very big or just Natalie. Big. Natalie. What's that? Okay. So it can go very big. Uh, come back to it. Jerome. Yeah, What's the name? Shh. Oh, one moment. Okay, Jerome. AJ Robot. AJ Robot. And what can it do?
There are different schools of thought. I know there's one teacher here, a senior teacher, I think, who says that you shouldn't say please to kids. But I think um, the first time, yeah, I'd say please. Kieran, Kieran, away, please. But um, second time, if you hadn't, then put it away now. Uh, I'd, I'd get more stern. But I, there's a thing where you've, I think, that you, like, say if you shout or if you, uh, you're, you're very harsh in tone all the time, then it loses its impact. He, he spilled coke all over the table. Well, why does he have coke? I think because if you don't manage the little things, then it'll be a problem later. Like, it, you know, um, mechanical pencils, got to be one of the most annoying things ever. And like, because they'll spend, I mean, adults will do this, they'll spend ages fiddling with a mechanical pencil. So if you don't tell them to put everything away, like, you know, you get a pencil, get out a mechanical pencil, fair play. But then if you don't tell them to put everything else away, then they'll get out the little bit of lead and they'll start stuffing it in and they'll start doing like this. You know, even you're, you're talking or you set it up, you put the instructions on the board quite clearly what you want them to do, but they'll still start looking in a book. And you're like, well, why are you looking in the book? So you take the book away and it's not a problem. Um, and it, it does look like, um, like maybe at times that you're obsessing about little things, but then I never have an issue with two kids getting in a fight because one of them took a pencil from the other one or somebody, you know, pushed someone's pencil case off a table or somebody wrote something on somebody else's book or someone was writing notes. Well, you can't write notes because there's no small bits of paper and there's no pencil unless you need a pencil. Books away and put that paper in your folder for the moment, please. If your table's clear, you'll need a pencil and a rubber. Okay. The table's clear in 30 seconds. I'll give you a card. 29, 28, 27, 26. Get a pencil, but I don't want any pencil cases on your table. You can get a rubber and get your book as well, please. Okay? It's little breaks as well, so it helps with transitions. So, you know, right now we're going to be doing something involving the book. So you get your book out, you put it on the table, you're using the book. Now we've finished that, so you put the book away because we've moved on. We're not using the book anymore. When I was doing um, the PGCE, when I was a lot of stuff I was reading it became and when I was being observed it became quite apparent that a lot of management issues that I might have or that might come up are a result of a lack of planning. How do I go from this stage into this stage into this stage? And what will they be doing when I'm doing this? So, you know, if if I want to go and talk to one table, what are the other tables doing? Because that's a potential for them not to be doing what they should be doing. If I'm writing on the board, how do I know that they're gonna be engaged? I'm not saying by any means that it should be like a slick performance because if your students bring up something else, you have to be able to divert to, to go onto that. But if you're making up a lesson as you go along, then you're, you're naturally going to have to have thinking time and you're naturally going to have to pause and look at things. Or, for example, setting up visual material or the audio, if you're messing around with a CD, that's dead time to them and they're going to get bored. Okay, hands up if you think it's not real. Okay, so these three tables, unlucky. You're correct. Well done. Yeah, very good. Okay, so one, one. Well done. Yes, you are correct. Okay. So yes. Finish. If they're sitting properly, or they do, you know, they put the things away, that kind of thing. They get a card. Three. Yes. One. Two. Three. We then use the cards. We count up at the end and the winning team gets two stamps. And then over the semester, if you get 25 stamps, um, you get a prize. 40, 51, 61, 70, 72, 76, 81, 87 for this table. <coughs> How many do you think? Because it's cards, it's entirely random. So you could have the team that's always answering all the questions correctly and they just keep picking twos and threes and one kid just answers one question correctly and he picks a king and then his team get more points. The tables that do very well academically uh, are always the tables that you know will win in these kind of games but you know there's other things at play as well. There's like you know trying hard, like following rules, listening to instructions and these, these things matter as well. Number one's for cleaning the house, okay. And number two, what do we think? The kids that are struggling, um, 
you've got to give them loads of opportunities to, to catch up or, or to, to be good. Um, you can have little words with them, but you know, oh, that's five minutes, you've still been really good, well done, reward them. Little one-to-one -one conversations like that during classes. I think if you've got a, a child who's trying to make amends, I think make a big, big difference to them. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Anne. Bye, Rachel. Bye, Natalie. Bye, Vivian. Bye-bye, Alice. Okay, you guys.